So welcome everyone to the final segment of our capillary loyalty masterclass. In this session, we will hear from the experts at Forrester on the future of loyalty. Joining me today over Zoom are Mary Pilecki and Emily Collins. Mary is currently a vice president and a principal analyst at Forrester focused on the loyalty industry. And Emily is currently a vice president and a research director at Forrester. Prior to this role, Emily was also a principal analyst with an emphasis on the loyalty industry. You know, personally, I consider Emily and Mary to be two of the foremost experts in the loyalty industry, and they always bring some very unique perspectives, especially on the future of loyalty. So welcome, Mary and Emily. I'm thrilled you're joining us today. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Nice to be here. Happy to be here. Perfect. So let's get started. Uh, Emily, I'm going to start with you. When most people think of loyalty programs, they think of points programs. Certainly, points programs help pave the way for loyalty. You know, we heard from Sumit and Frank in our first session about the history of loyalty all the way back to SMH Green Stamps. Uh, but many of those programs are being replaced or outpaced by more sophisticated constructs that go beyond buy X and get Y. Emily, what are your thoughts on the evolution of programs and the behaviors or activities these programs reward? Sure. So this is something that both Mary and I have been talking about for a long time, that you know, earning consumer loyalty, really having that loyal relationship with customers has always been about more than points and discounts. Um, you know, so earning consumer loyalty is really about the relationship. And certainly we've seen over the past five or more years, even a lot of companies have have shifted their focus on their programs away from just being about, you know, the, the incentivized transaction. And some of this is out of necessity um, with so many companies across so many in industries investing in loyalty programs. It's really hard to differentiate when all you have to stand on is what everyone else is offering. Um, and frankly, the, the deeper the discount, the, the riskier it gets in terms of your program actually returning uh, anything on your investment. And it's pretty easy for those financials to, to kind of go belly up on the program. But we've also seen a shift because companies and marketers are realizing that the real value of a loyalty program when done well is bigger than just that incentivized transaction, that it's actually um, a source of, of that permissioned and opted in relationship and a, and a really strong source of insights that can be used across the organization to drive loyalty more broadly. Um, so we, we've definitely seen this evolution uh, beyond points to something that's a little bit more experiential. And so those loyalty experiences can manifest as part of a program. So you have brands and retailers like like Sephora, for instance, that have, you know, virtual and in-person experiences that can be redeemed in the points bazaar. Or you also have loyalty experiences manifesting, you know, outside of a program altogether. And then in some cases, especially in like the credit card and travel industry, you have these experiential programs like Bonvoy Moments or um, the Discover Priceless programs that it may be connected to a loyalty program, but it really has its own uh, website and branded experience um, focused on kind of uh, providing customers with those priceless and uh, one of a kind experiences that, um, that are, aren't available to everyone all the time. Uh, so uh, thank you, Emily. And you mentioned the word experience, experience quite a bit, and, I, and I'm glad you did, but that's becoming so mentioned in, in all, throughout all the loyalty discussions of today. But to continue uh, on what you just spoke to, as loyalty programs continue to evolve beyond simple points constructs, uh, they've begun also to expand beyond this stereotype as just a marketing tactic. You know, innovative dynamic loyalty programs today are increasingly being viewed as uh, extremely valuable assets for data collection, and a core strategic pillar of the business that drives not only sales, but as part of the customer's entire experience with the brand. You know, can you talk to us a bit about the shift away from viewing loyalty as just points to boosting sales and not just a marketing tactic? Sure. So there are kind of two things I want to hit on here. So first being like loyalty programs moving beyond just like points for sales. Um, certainly we've seen that consumers value more than just those material benefits, right? So they want those special 
experiences. They want to feel special. They want to earn status. They want opportunities to provide feedback. And those experiential benefits that a program can offer also help um, reinforce relationship resiliency and really bring the customer closer to the brand versus just giving them a discount because they've made a purchase or a point in exchange for a purchase. So it deepens the relationship in some ways. But the other thing that you talked about, or the other thing that I want to unpack here is that a loyalty program is one tactic. Loyalty is actually an outcome. It's not, you know, a loyalty strategy and a loyalty program are not synonymous. And, and loyal earning customers' loyalty is the outcome that the business is looking for, um, not just having a loyalty program. And certainly we see that there are many, many brands out there that have fierce loyal customers that don't necessarily have a program at all. Um, you know, you have some iconic brands like Apple that they have a really strong brand that attracts customers and they keep them with the product. You have other brands that have excellent and exceptional customer service. And that's the kind of value that those brands deliver for their customers, you know, like a Zappos or, uh, or a Chewy. And, you know, for brands that don't have that iconic loyalty driver, so to speak, programs can play an important role as a part of their loyalty strategy to help deliver and, and collect those insights. Um, so loyalty is an outcome that's the sum of many things that a company does that isn't just owned by marketing. It is a part of the customer experience. Um, IT plays a role in terms of the types of technology they use to uh, execute that customer experience and enable that customer experience. Customer service plays a role, but loyalty programs as a part of that toolkit create that opted in permission relationship that helps companies collect customer data, whether it's behavioral and transactional data or preferences and interests and intent data. Um, and right now in a world where we're seeing, you know, the forces of data deprecation limit the amount of data that companies can collect, loyalty programs play a really important role in kind of helping be that source of customer understanding that companies can use to, of course, optimize their promotions and offers, optimize loyalty program related experiences, but also impact customer experiences across the life cycle as well. It's not just kind of held to that one single location within you know, the organization or their strategy. Yeah, it's interesting. We've talked we've talked a lot about value here, and and I, I used to have a quiz I gave people, and, and it's actually quite amazing the impact a loyalty program can have for a brand, um, in terms of even just plain business results. You know, several years ago, I learned that the American Airlines Rewards Program actually was more valuable than the company itself. At first, I was shocked. I didn't believe it, um, but it's true. Uh, look it up, and this is true for many loyalty programs. So they become a real strategic uh, weapon. Uh, for brands.